As we look forward to our first keynote address on next generation banking, uh, leveraging technology for customer first experience, I'm about to invite a veteran from the banking industry. He has devoted more than three and a half years to the banking industry and continues to teach us all. A mentor for many, somebody who continues to guide. May I request all of you to please put your hands together as I extend a very warm welcome to Sri Alok Kumar Chaudhary, Managing Director, State Bank of India. A round of applause as he joins us on stage. So, good morning, everyone. All the celebrated achievers in this BFSI space in their own, uh, uh, own standing. So, it's quite an honor to be here amongst the Eurodac audience and amongst all of you. Our agents of change in the tech hill BFSI sector at this in terms of adoption, experimentation, and form. So, ED as we have been knowing from childhood, has been, has uh, futuristic outlook, and has a deep connect with people, you and me, and classes and masters together. And it has been at the forefront of seeing new ideas, nurturing talent, initiating people into the world of economy and finance, towards newspapers and towards other publications. It also brings forth new ideas, views from across the globe, educating us all about the economic forces that save this multi-layer nation of us. So thank you again for organizing this event because this evening is always it reminds us to instill a sense of confidence, a new hope and belief in our collective prowess to bring about transformation and assert in in a very informed and understanding manner. So thank you again for this. Now, the theme of the summit today is basically about nation and banking and technological support for this entire process with keeping the customer in the focus. So it promises us to deliver and herald a new kind of era which is full of opportunity, limitless possibilities. And I believe I do that in this country it's a generation of ours, the opportunity and the possibilities far outweigh the vulnerability which may be generally talked about, and as the winds of change sweep through this country in all its spheres, there won't have a better sphere than the BFSI sector, which is at the helm of transformation to understand the change and surmise of it, because it has adopted an integrated technology in this way of its working, leveraging it for the benefit for all the stakeholders in it, and mostly the customers, most prominently that of the section. Now, as the customers are increasingly and assertively positioning themselves in all the cyclonic changes which we see in the present, it has acquired ramification, which demands and commands meeting of discrete sociology and psychology of the customer with deep tech developments as well as AI-enabled marketing in a very natural way. So this is this innate customer simplicity, as well as evolving need of these customers with the frame of the new generation customer, which is the fulcrum of my speech today. So coming out of this financial sector, it has undergone a deep transformation. Innovation anchored by technological breakthroughs, is the main aspect, central and gradient, and the core competency for all organizations to try and endure in this present time. Enhanced by Global Connect, the consumer sentiments, the new tech trends, macro credential initiatives and efforts which are being taken. This sector has already experienced and is regularly experiencing revival and resurrection in times where the digital facing challenges from within and outside. Not only from the Sony evolution, but also from the unending launch of digital uh, innovations and products and services. So, this situation is also getting complicated because of 
the increased awareness of customers about his rights, about the safety of expectations, about the, uh, say, the onslaught of competition which is being thrown at this particular sector, it has reached a point of inflection where the industry has to think as to how to build this. Under these circumstances, players in this space, whether small or big, they are forced to restrict their vision as to why they survive, what is the vision, to redefine the ways they do business, and also kind of adapt in this new paradigm in a non fictional manner, showing a great deal of resilience in absorbing as well as propagating the doses of change which are exponentially being thrown on all of us together. Why? Because it has to right pick the levers which will enable all of us together, particularly the banking sector, to optimally transform itself in a futuristic space. So, all the changes we have understood, however, the disruptions which are coming in the sector. So the means of change which you are seeing here are coming from different corners, starting from the economic and financial interest of the customer himself, because he is not satisfied with what he is getting from the bank. He wants to maximize his returns through different asset classes by experimentation and by even by say, sort of uh, I mean, losing something in the process. But his quest is permanent, he wants to move away from this space alone, he wants to experiment. Now, the other things which have happened and which have really changed this entire sphere is the deep tech and the thin tech coming with new kind of possibilities, the opportunities, the new, uh, say, the non traditional entities offering also brand like services, the next products and services which are being given to the customers, all these cumulatively and collectively have opened new doors of opportunities and that exciting opportunity to the customers who were hitherto aspirationally capped by the present system of banking which would generally mean to be your day. Under these circumstances, a new class of consumers is coming. And which is demanding, which is over demanding and rather over demanding. And so the banks don't have any option but to change itself for Dealing with this new class of customers. Now, with this change and disruption, the question is what is nature of banks? How will this new class of customers be dealt with by banks? So, that is where the next gen banking comes. So, next gen banking will be quite different from what we have witnessed so far as the deep tech and the digitally savvy people are cutting across caste class and uh, origin. Young, young at age, and young at thought, young at experimentation. So they have emerged as one of the most predominant and prominent consumer group for the banks. This has also been kind of compounded, or the entire landscape of banking has been changed because of different things which have happened in the sector, like, say, including the new professional laws, the transparency which has come into competition, which has set it, as well as the lowering of prices. So all this has led to this new class of customers who is tech savvy, always ready for experimentation. And there are firms in this entire space who are ready to provide and feed them with the services which they want. So this has happened and this requires the banks to adopt and integrate technology in the purposes what they do because the customers want experience. Now, the next in banking will surely be using technology for crafting customer experiences on the go, so that this customer, whose attention span may be quite limited, is always hooked to your, uh, your kind of firm. And once we have understood that how the disruption is set in this particular space, how the emergence of new Tech savvy digital customer is demanding all attention from banks. It's important to understand what would be the new model of next gen banking. So, the new model of, on the angle for next gen banking 
basically is built around a triangle. And this triangle is nothing but B, C, and F. Better, cheaper, and faster. So the offerings which are better, simple, intuitive. So these offerings are being provided to us. He has all the space which he demands. He can open an account in his, from his house, transact the way he wants. As well as, he also has uh, so opportunities and the control over his own finances. He is able to monitor, predict his own cash flow from his handheld devices at his own time, use it optimally, and to top it all, this entire technology has also led to the electrification of imagination of investors. How? Because the traditional models of giving credit or receiving product credit, as static as they are, because of the technological retro, because of the digital footprints, it's possible to create a new credit modeling <coughs> engine which allows customers to get finance at his own time, depending upon his own digital footprints desires and needs, and the credit modeling the uh, business ruling in his provides. So under these circumstances, the customers are the spoiled for choice, there is a huge number of choice, need for, and the need for experimentation is also there as an intent. With this, there is another thing which is also there. So deep tech incurring to the free for financialization of masses is going to bring change in experience and competition in a very surreal way. So it's choice, democratization of choice, availability in surfing. We have understood how disruption has come, from what sources it has come, how the emergence of the new customer is impacting the banks, and how the banks are forced to go for the next in bank. So the attributes of this customer or his needs will also have to be uncovered. See, there are four broad things which are impacting the banks from the customer's point. What is the four broad things? The first thing is immediate. So this need has been uncovered. Customer wants immediate. The second thing is conditionality. That I'll explain later. The third is individuality. And the fourth, but the most important these days for the new gen customer is congruence in world view of both the customer and the bank. So the customer of tomorrow is impatient, even today is impatient. He wants everything immediately, instead of his gratification. And we don't have time to placate him because his loyalty is already raised with him. Loyalty for him is something different, it's more transaction. So under these circumstances, the banks have to react differently. The second thing is conditionality, which is quite different in the bank in which you understand. We understood banking as a sacred bank, where terms and conditions are set by the bank, where the structure of the product, the tenure of the product, the repayments, eligibility, everything was on a static menu. And you had to take it for it. But the customers now, they say no. I want things at place of my choice, time of my choice, channel of my choice. And the conditions attached will have to be flexible. So I will keep the option of flexibility, deciding terms and conditions of myself. And your demand delivery structure has to be fluid and instructive. The third thing which the customer wants is customized kind of products and services having a flavor of his individuality, uniqueness, and eventually leading to hyper personalization based on his demographic uh, attributes, his income streams, his opinion treatments on the digital media. So he wants that. Last but not least is the congruence of work. All of us are used to a state where bread alone doesn't matter. So we want to have purpose in life. So what are Individual attributes or thought processes or worldview a customer has, he also wants, he or she also wants that the bank should mirror his thought processes 
his world views and what the bank does, be it the ESG compliances, be it the climate action, be it the acquisition of green assets, be it the gender diversity initiatives, be it the CSR expenditure of the bank makes, or the managing makes for building community. So under these circumstances, the needs of customers have changed. It's not bread alone, it's not bread alone. So what many things now go into the conjunction and production of all these things? We have understood so far how disruptions have come, how the new customer has emerged, is becoming very prominent and very demanding, what new generation customer experience will mean, what are the attributes of this new conjunction, what are the key needs of the customer to move more on the So understanding all this, it's also imperative to know whether the customer experience is also changing. So the customer experience will have the same attributes, which are now, will have the same processes of inquiry, trial, communication, and repeat process. However, the communication part is now left out, deleted out of this continuum, because communication will surface, he gets communication all across or at all stages. In this process, because communication is all across and the opportunities are immense, the options are immense, it is important for banks to understand that the customer will terminate his journey the moment he wants, the moment he finds that the attributes which have been given or professed by the bank are not matching with the actual experience, he will terminate his journey. But the experience, the feeling of the customer, when he will go the same thing, he will do the same thing. He will think, he will act, he will experience, and he will feel. So the feeling part will remain the same. What is the feeling of the customer? The customer will go through the same cycle. He will be uh, quite comparing, confused, curious at the time of inquiry. He will go for, I mean, he will be apprehensive and uncertain while uh, doing the trial. He will also have hope and expectation when he's successful to do the trial and finally emerge as a confident and assured person once the transaction is completed. Now this entire process, though the components remain the same, for the bank it will be necessary to match this with the first thing which I said immediately. So all these components will have to be structured through technology in a manner so that people are able to experience all these emotions in a very short way. So understanding all this has to do what are the banks do? That's the question. So for transitioning to the new paradigm of next gen banking, banks don't have an option. They don't have an option. But they have one more. They have to beforehand capture this safety expectation, safety demand. And create products and processes even without somebody saying. And that is what the Steve Jobs said many times, customer doesn't know what he wants. It is what producer to think on his behalf and show him that this is also possible. The bank will have to do this, create products and services in a manner which smells of all the attributes which you have spoken about and give it to his place, his time and choice. This is what the banks will do. Banks have already done it. Most of the banks in different stages of the continuum of evolution. They have already created new architectures, created new modular components of software and application, so, so that it is easier to atomize each component of this entire process, create compounds and mixtures experiences without losing touch of the risk reward continuum because the banks also exist for making profits. So they have to be quite agile in say sort of analyzing and synthesizing the entire process so that they are able to try and make some money out of it besides giving the experience which is required. So they are already hauling the boat. They are using, as uh, Zinai said, they are already using AI, ML, they are using RPA, they are using cloud-based services. Everything is getting done. Of course, the banks are at different stages of this evolution. And the two things, or three things which the banks are going to do, one is prioritizing the experience of the customer for an omnichannel experience, predominantly through digital media, 
and second, also prioritizing the data collection part, so that the 360 degree profile of the customer is created, and it's possible to hyper personalize his needs and create products out of that. The third thing is the banks are doing is they're investing a lot in resources, employees, skilling, technical resources. And also building a new culture, self from culture, because as we understand that there's already a tectonic set. There's a location in the market, from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Under these circumstances, the employees will also have to get out of a manual mindset and think in a technological manner. So this is all the banks are doing, and this is going to be. Now, coming to the statement of India, we have been at the forefront of Everything for the last two, more than 200 years. Any raising, any time, we have been able to invent and reinvent ourselves to remain relevant and also be ahead of the curve. So it was a day of happening for all of us, maybe sometime in 1995, 96, wherein to the entire country which is professed and fit to have the Indian, we were able to showcase the branch best banking on a computer and taking away all the bulky and funky lasers from the high inside of the rest. We again shifted gears, and maybe in 2000, we were able to say decisively allow the customer to win over geographic license. By throwing core banking solutions to the customers, the customers got delighted, they got a control over geography, they were able to uh, say consume services at the place they want. Now, with a lot of digital assets, there are huge number of ATMs, the highest in the country, the highest cars, the highest spends, the POS, the AES, uh, of QR and the UPI leader set. I don't think we are there, but we, we are not satisfied, we are not resting with the markets. We are excited about the possibility of the future based on technology. So what we are doing is, not only we are augmenting our internal capacity to try out, new technology, craft customer-first experiences, but we are also not signing away from the ecosystem partners, maybe fintechs, the wide area of fintechs, who can collectively solve the problems of the customer, who can collectively lead to customer-first experience in the banking, who are not signing away either from acquiring technology, developing it ourselves, putting it ourselves, or also hiring talent from the market, no questions asked. Under these circumstances, we have already given a sense of actually banking experience to our flagship offering known as Yono. More than 52 million customers already registered from there. They are all get, already getting a task of the relation banking, banking lifestyle Yono, with different kinds of values for different kinds of customers. We are making it a way of life. Every day, every moment, thousands of people are working on reimagining, imagining the customer journey removing the frictions wherever it fell and trying to increase its entire speed. So, to sum up, what we have discussed as the start of the program is understanding how this disruption has happened. What are the sources of disruption? And how this disruption has led to the emergence and genesis of new class of person who is demanding and who has attributes of his own. And how this class of customers is going to be dealt with, delighted, and wowed by leveraging technological tools and processes, keeping the customers at the focus of what we do, how the banks are evolving, how they have worked up with it, with this entire change of paradigm. So, before closing this, I would like to quote from Alvin Koffer, the great journalist who famously said, no knowledge is absolute, and no metaphor is complete. So whatever I've said, is just a portion of whatever knowledge is available. And the way I've structured this entire thought process is just one way of looking at it. But as you know, this entire space is evolving in a manner which is almost, uh, say, more than the scale velocity which is required. And this space is going to change, understanding itself is going to change, huge cases are going to evolve 
are going to be simulating, are going to create a lot of, uh, say, margins for the uh, uh, sectors of the customers. And the only thing which we'll do is that this is a country of ours, more than when, uh, say, throws uh, people. And we are not at the same stage. So, as the nation's bank, commanding almost 25% of the economy, have more than 46 crore uh, uh, of customers, we understand that our responsibility is different as a state of India. So, what we what are we going to do is we are not going to stop chain because we can't do it. But we are going going to save this transformation in a very humane, compassionate way. So that the fringe elements of society, the people who, are, who have still not arrived at this kind of place, for them also, this transformation is accessible. And is able to reap the benefits of this change, the benefits of technology, get next to the customers. And that is our goal, because for us, all the customers, small or big, are very special, and we respect all of them. So thank you for patience, Gary, and stay safe.